All right, thank you, Bob. Well, this was supposed to be a big season for both these two schools. Tennessee last year won the Sugar Bowl, and Georgia Tech went nine and two, but it's been a disappointing season so far. Georgia Tech is uh, two, three, and one. Tennessee is two and four, and they are winless in SEC play. And what's at stake for these two teams? What's the significance of this game today? Not much. Uh, let's be very brutally honest about it. I tell you, whoever wins tonight still has a chance to go to a bowl, as strangely as that sounds, folks. Tennessee is two and four, and that is not too good if you're a fan in Knoxville, and Johnny Majors is well aware of the pressure there. As far as Bill Curry is concerned, he's two, three, and one, and when you look at the bowl situation, now that does sound crazy that these two teams probably have a chance to go to the bowl, but remember, folks, there are 19 bowls. That means that 38 teams in the United States will be playing after the season's over with, so, you know, if you're six and five, uh, a lot of six and five teams get invitations to bowls today. Well, um, one of the reasons I'm all choked up about this matchup, <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> the uh, one of the reasons that Bill Curry is is so concerned about Tennessee is because of the quarterback Jeff Francis, who's completed almost 68 percent of his passes, and Anthony Miller, a fine wide receiver. I tell you, they have moved the football well all year long. Jeff Francis has been a pleasant surprise for Johnny Majors, as you say, he's throwing at a 67 percent clip. Anthony Miller, Major says. Is probably the best receiver he's ever had there. So, you know, and you're talking about guys like Stanley Morgan and a few other great uh, Willie Galt, some great receivers at the University of Tennessee. And he says this kid is, well, simply the best. So I think we're going to see a pretty good matchup tonight. You know, these two teams, even though they've won only two ball games, they match up pretty well. They're going to move the football. Their defenses aren't strong this year. Georgia Tech also has a fine passing combination in Rick Strom and Gary Lee, who holds many of the pass catching records here at Tech. And that's been a little bit surprised. Now, where Georgia Tech has been hurts on defense, as we take a look at Rick Strom throwing a touchdown pass to Jerry Mays, you're going to see Jerry Mays now. He's a fine sophomore, one of the best sophomores in the country. He runs the football well, he's a game breaker, uh, and he can catch the football well. He is really an integral part of their offense, and he's got to have a good day. And Gary Lee uh, has the 4-5 speed. Uh, he's told, he's, uh, I mentioned he's already broken a couple of pass receiving records. He has 13 career touchdowns. He's within one of that mark. And he's the possession type receiver. He's who uh, Mr. Strom and that Georgia Tech offense will go to on third down. He and Mays. And uh, Gary Lee's a, one of the best athletes that, play, uh, that plays football in the United States. He is really uh, a fine athlete. He returns punts. He can catch the football. He's a good blocker, he, and he's a real leader. All right, Paul, what about the weather? It's rained for most of the day. It's overcast tonight. Not raining at the moment, however. Well, I'll tell you, as far as Georgia Tech is concerned, I think they would be a little bit more happy if more people showed up. They sold this thing out, 47,000 people. Tickets were sold, but because of the rain, I don't know how many people are going to be here. Uh, the field's going to be fine. This is uh, artificial turf, and uh, I think, actually, uh, it's going to be all right. I don't think it's going to rain. All right, Paul, let's go back to Bob Neal. And thank you, gentlemen. I'm sure you'll be staying dry at the uh, press facilities there at Grant Field, not too far from our studios here in Atlanta, just down the street a bit, where Georgia Tech and Tennessee will be doing battle in a few minutes. Time to give you a couple of scores, though, before we go back to that. It was Rutgers beating Army by a score of 35-7 to today, and Pittsburgh didn't do a very good job with treating the Navy very well either. It was Pittsburgh 56-14 to over the Navy. And I just want to toss this other one in very quickly. Michigan State beat Purdue 37-3. to The key there is that Lorenzo White is back. And now, Tennessee, Georgia Tech getting ready to do battle at Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia. And we'll be going to that in just a moment. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Now, the taste of lemonade. Crisp, clean, refreshing. Is in the ultimate thirst quencher, Gatorade. Gatorade is thirsty for that deep down body thirst. <sighs> New lemonade flavored Gatorade thirst quencher refreshes you with the light, crisp taste of lemonade while it helps put back what your whole body's thirsty for. Gatorade is thirsty. Network Television. <laughs> Turner Network Television presents Super Football Saturday Night. Tonight's game features the Tennessee Volunteers against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. 
brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealers, who invite you to come see the 1986 Ford Cars and Trucks. Have you driven a Ford lately? It's an overcast, rainy night in Atlanta, Georgia, as Georgia Tech hosts Tennessee this evening. It's been a disappointing year for these two schools. Georgia Tech, 2-3-1 two, and one coming into the game. They're 2-2 two and two in ACC play, and Tennessee is 2-4, and four, and they are winless, 0-3 oh in the Southeast Conference. Hello, everybody. I'm Mel Proctor, along with Paul Horning, and despite the disappointing records, it should be a pretty good football game, but in Tennessee's case, it's been really uh, largely... Uh, responsible or due to the injuries. Donnie Major says he cannot remember a year where there's been so many injuries and so many tough injuries to take. Here comes Tennessee right through the big orange right there. Two and four. I want to tell you something about two and four. If you're in Knoxville, Tennessee, and you're the head coach, you're Johnny Majors, you're walking around town on your toes. Uh, they don't like two and four seasons. And I think this, both these teams are better than their records. They really are. As I said, the team who wins tonight has still got a chance so maybe later on in the year, if they can put a little winning record, uh, some victories together, they can definitely go to a bowl. And here come the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Their problem has not been so much injuries, but inexperience. They lost nine of 11 starters off last year's defensive unit. They got four freshmen starting on defense, and the defense was the name of the game last year. They had a good quarterback in John Dewberry. They're pretty happy with Rick Brown. They've got a couple other uh, quarterbacks that they redshirted, so they should be strong in the future. But I tell you, I think both these teams are going to move the football. Their defenses aren't strong, and we got a good matchup. All right, it'll be Georgia Tech against Tennessee, and we'll be back with a kickoff for tonight's game in just a moment. The moment you see the award-winning Ford Taurus, you notice the difference in design. A difference that becomes even more dramatic the moment you drive one. Now we imagine others will eventually catch on, but they may never catch up. This is Taurus. Have you driven a Ford lately? Give me a light. <laughs> That's not correct, Steve. Don't just ask for a light, dear. Come on, give me a light. You asked for it, Steve. Oh, oh, Bud Light! Yes, Steve, Bud Light. The light beer with the first name you taste. Don't just ask for a light. Bud Light, because everything else isn't just a light, Steve. This is Super Football Saturday Night on Turner Network Television. cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down an oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. It has rained all afternoon. It is not raining at the moment, but very high humidity this evening. As Tennessee and Georgia Tech are about to get underway, Georgia Tech has won the coin toss, and the Yellow Jackets will receive. They drop back deep. The dangerous Gary Lee, number 33, who had a 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown against North Carolina State. And last year, he had a 95-yarder for a TD against Georgia. Number 25 is Corey Collier. Tech lost Auburn last week, 31 to 10, while Tennessee was routed by Alabama, 56-28. Carlos Rivez, the younger brother of Miami Dolphin kicker, Juan Rivez, who played here at Tennessee, will kick off. It'll be Gary Lee at the four. He 
There was some running room off of the 25, 30, and knocked out of bounds near the 35-yard line by Terry McDaniel, but a good run back for Gary Lee as Rick Strom heads into the huddle. He's been very consistent for them all four years. Here's to take a look at Georgia Tech. Backfield and receivers, and there's Gary Lee. He's the big man. He's the big play man, and Jerry Mays, the tailback, is a good one. The All-American center, John Davis, a 300-pounder, a converted tackle. Is he something? Number one draft choice right here, folks. First down for the Yellow Jackets. Corey Collier, Malcolm King are the running backs. 5-2 defense. And off is to Gary Mays, who is in there. The blocking. Right up the middle, behind John Davis, 6'5", 200. Pages. I think I missed 260. He's bigger than that. Robbie Scott missed three games with a broken leg, but he's back and playing extremely well. Dale Jones, an all-Southeastern Conference selection a year ago at linebacker. Secondary with Ron McDaniel, Benton, and Davis. Defense has been a real disappointment for Tennessee this year. Second down and two. The handoff again to Jerry Mays, ripping for a first down deep into Tennessee's territory. Take that Malcolm King, the fullback. Good, blo good blocking up front right over the left guard. Dean Weaver, number 78. John Davis, that big center. Six foot seven, 304 pound. He collapsed the nose guard. Look at this big 14-yard pickup here. Good hard running by Malcolm King, the junior. 5'9", 204 pounds. Very compact, strong football player. Got good legs. And we've got an injury. Number 22, Charles Davis, is down for Tennessee, the starting free safety. Last week against Alabama, the Crimson Tide scored on six of their first seven possessions, and Georgia Tech is moving with ease so far. And right over, right up the middle. The first play went right up the middle, and the second play about the same thing. Just a little zone blocking up front. The man in front of you, let's take him, and they took them both off the line of scrimmage. Each collapsed. Brian Hunt, the nose guard for Tennessee. So Charles Davis is shaken up. You see, they, uh, Phil Curry says he was an outstanding tackle. Davis was an offensive tackle. He said, but when I moved him to, when I moved John Davis to center, he became, he was a great center right away. As we take a look at Coach Majors, the runner-up to Paul Horning and voting for the 1956 Heisman Trophy. He was a great tailback at Tennessee. He sure was. Undefeated season. 10 and 0 that year. Single wing football. That was about the last of it. Donnie Majors, I was the tailback in that great on that great team. And Bill Curry, Paul Horning's former teammate sure. with the Green Bay Packers. Bright, articulate young uh, man. And he stayed in a lot better shape than Paul Horning, I'll tell you. That. <laughs> <laughs> he gets out there with those kids, does those exercises. He looks good. First down for Georgia Tech at the Tennessee 37. In motion is Richard Hills. And the handoff is to Jerry Mays, Humble. and he fumbles the football. Looks like Jerry Mays got the back recovered. Here. By the way, the officials tonight, the referee is Ron Gilbert. Rosario Amato is the umpire. Ray Moon, the head linesman. The field judge is Pete Owens. William Booker, the line Double judge. Jerry McKee is the side judge. And the back Jerry. judge is Robert Sandell. Eric Bearden, right guard, recovered the fumble. So it'll be second down and seven. Three straight runs. That put the ball up. Why not? Alabama rushed for 457 yards against Tennessee last week. Rick Strom with plenty of time. And the catch is made at the 15-yard line by Gary Lee. Well, we, we called him consistent. This kid just makes play after play. He's been doing it for four years. Gary Lee, great athlete. 6'2", 199 pounds. He's a senior from Albany, Georgia. And he makes a beautiful, beautiful diving catch over here. Alpha play action. Play action off the right side. He's going to come. You see the tight end? He's coming across. But he goes on downfield. A little deep sprout. Look at this nice catch by Gary Lee. Buck Isom is in at wide receiver. He puts on to the right side along with Richard Hills. First out at the 15. Strom again with plenty of time. Swings it out of the backfield to Jerry Mays. Green. On a cut back inside the 10-yard line. Got a good block by Eric Beard and his right guard. It's just a quick running screen. And Kelly, I'll tell you, has Georgia Tech been impressive here offensively, huh? Moving with no problem. Hey, Kelly Ziegler made the tackle, and Johnny Majors is concerned about his defense. It's happened to him all year long. 
Sports Illustrated this week voted Tennessee as the flop of the year in college football, and I asked Johnny Majors about that, and he said, we can't be concerned with fighting windmills. Yeah. They've got to concentrate on hitting the bullseye, but he said the defense first has to find the bullseye. Yep. They won the SEC last year, and what an upset, a big win. Gary Mays. Slip trying to cut back inside the five-yard line. Charles Kimbrough on the stop. Uh, if I remember correctly, you correct me now, they were pretty big underdogs, weren't they, against Miami in the, in the bowl game, and they kind of had an easy time, an easy win. 35 to 7. Very surprising. So Majors had a great year, and to come back and to have this staring, staring him in the face is strong, 2 and 4. First and goal to go at the three-yard line. Malcolm King and Jerry Mays are the running backs. The handoff is to King, the fullback, hit at the line of scrimmage, and he really took a hit. Good Saw that stat a moment ago, Paul. The last 25 times the opposition has had the ball inside the 20, they have scored, which is incredible. Milton Gordon making a start. A freshman made the tackle, number 52. And watch this tackle. This is a good one. Look, and he filled a hole right there. That's the way a linebacker is reading those blocks. Stepped right in to fill the hole. A great tackle by Milton Gordon. Gain of one yard at second and goal to go from the two. Corey Collier, number 25, is in the backfield now along with King. The pitch is to King. Uh -oh. He stopped. Good defense, good pursuit. Short of a touchdown. Anthony Howard, number 99, made the initial hit for Tennessee along with the nose guard, Brian Hunt, number 74. Johnny Majors felt that the team that would score first tonight would have a big advantage since both teams are struggling to find their confidence. Nate Kelsey, number one, is in now for Georgia Tech. In the backfield. Third and goal to go. Kelsey is trotted on the left side. Strong to throw into the end zone. It's juggled and it's incomplete as he tried to connect with fullback Malcolm King. He went to the wrong man. Number 40, a tight end, Tim Mannion, was wide open. Well, absolutely wide open, Mel, about eight yards deep in the end zone. He was back there all by himself. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Here comes the rollout. Now he goes to his up man. Now back to the left. Little pass is a little out in front, but I don't think he would have scored. That pass has to be thrown on target to give the receiver a chance to catch the ball quickly and then turn up field to get into the end zone. But he picked out the wrong man. The tight end was wide open for six. David Bell was in to try a field goal from this range. He is two for three. He has 29 career field goals at Georgia Tech. Now tied with Ron Rice. So if he converts this one, he will take over the top spot. Darrell Gast is holding for him, and the officials call for a timeout. All it is is an extra point, and it's moved over about three yards to the right. The way of game against Tech. Well, too much time. Put him back by. Kickers hate that, I tell you. Even though it's an easy field goal, it just gets you out of the rhythm. You have to kick, and then all of a five yards. It's not uh, that much more difficult to kick five yards back. But I think Tennessee uh, declined the penalty. He, they want to keep that angle. This will be a 19-yard field goal attempt by David Bell, a senior from Athens, Georgia. He missed it. It's no good. Wide to the left. He missed it. That's why they kept that angle there, folks. They turned down the five-yard penalty because it does give them a little bit better angle inside the 10-yard line. So after marching downfield, Georgia Tech able to get inside the 10 but unable to score, trying to settle for a field goal, and Bell missed it. So we are scoreless, the 10-18 mark of the first quarter, and this is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. Big and Big Brother taught me responsibility real fast. I take my little sister to ballet, music lessons, I watched her grow up. And boy, the questions she had. I didn't have all the answers, but I was there. Maybe that's why I enjoy being a Delta Red Coat. I get a great feeling out of helping people. Only now, I take my daughter to ballet. Delta, get you there. We get you there with care. It's been a long day, Walter. But I know you still got something left. Yeah, you've got energy from 100% whole wheat. Wheaties energy. 
Tonight's game is a sellout here at Grand Field. 46,000 is capacity, but as you can see, many people have decided to uh, stay home tonight, stay out of the rain, and stay right. dry. Well, Tennessee takes over their first possession at the 20-yard line. Jeff Francis is the quarterback. Heath Davis and Charles Wilson, the running backs, and they go with three wide receivers. Georgia Tech will have to be very concerned about the deep speed of Tennessee's wideouts. This is Charles Wilson carrying on first down. Really had injury problems, have the volunteers. At one time or another, four different backs have been hurt. A lot of speed with Clay Scales and Miller. Bruce Wilkerson, an all Southeastern Conference selection a year ago. Harry Galbraith is having a terrific year, according to Johnny Majors. Good offensive line. In fact, that area has pleased Coach Majors the most. Instead of the rest of our club is playing like the offensive line, we have no problems. Off to Keith Davis, the tailback tackle number made by number 75, Travis Moody, there. one of three freshmen in the starting lineup who are from Tennessee for Georgia Tech. Jurgensen, Ambrose, Moody, and Mullen up front. Moody is from Memphis, Tennessee. Willis Crockett returns to action last week after missing the last two games with knee injury. Rutland, Chamblin, Thomas, and Harrison. Gerald Chamblin starting in the secondary at cornerback this week. Third down and one. First down. Charles Wilson picks up the first down for the Volunteers. I tell you, both all the running backs for Tennessee have average, got a good average yards per carry. In fact, over five yards a pop running the football all year long. So they block well up front the offensive line. They move the football, but defensively is where they've been hurt. Jeff Francis, a sophomore from Mount Prospect, Illinois. Last year he played behind Tony Robinson and Daryl Dickey. And Johnny Major says he's the most confident sophomore quarterback I have ever coached. Mm -hmm. some good ones. Clint Scales is in motion. And the handoff again to Wilson, who's been busy in this first quarter, but he doesn't get much. He went to the wrong hole. We'll mix up on the blocking on the he left side. Right Johnny Majors, who had great success at Iowa State and Pitt before returning to his alma mater as head coach, now in his 10th year. Got a book out, You Can Go Home Again, written by Johnny Majors, along with a good friend of our co former colleague, Lindsey Nelson, Ben Bird. Ben's here. It's all Ben down there. It's selling quite well, especially around Tennessee. Now. Jeff Francis to throw. And he's got a man open and completes the pass to Joey Klingscales, breaking tackles, and he's close to a first down. And he broke a tackle at the 40-yard line. He got the first down on his own. Good hard running. He picks up 12. End zone replay going, coming right down the middle. Little delay over the middle. Here he comes. He was on the outside the position. Now watch this tackle. He breaks the tackle. Step right, right through the tackle. And he got, of Eric he got Thomas. 12, right, he got 12 yards. First down. The handoff is to Keith Davis, ripping off a big gainer, and he's got another first down at the 40 yard line. He loves the run over tacklers. We expected these two teams to move the football. Here's another 15 yard pickup, running the football and blocking well up front. Davis back in good health after missing three games with a knee injury. He's only a sophomore and led the team in rushing last year. He became the first Tennessee freshman to rush for over 100 yards in a game. He did it three times as a freshman. Jeff Francis to throw. Screen set up. And he looked like a screen pass they were attempting to set up, but it was thrown too low for Keith Davis. Uh, Georgia Tech defense smelled it out right away. Very wisely, Jeff Francis intentionally grounded that ball. Big number 79, Willie Burks, a 260-pound freshman, checks in for Bill Curry's Georgia Tech defense. Second down and 10. In giving up 56 points to Alabama last week, the most points allowed by Tennessee since 1893. They got off to a rough start that year. They lost their first four games, 56 to nothing, 64 to nothing, 70 to nothing, and 60 to nothing. Off is to, to pull back. Charles Wilson is going to play either spot in the back. Charles Wilson, back or fullback. Very versatile back. Good runner, good receiver. Picked up three tough yards. Andre Thomas, Thomas made the tackle. Mark White. 
Johnny Major says in terms of injuries this is the worst year he's ever experienced in 18 years a collegiate head coach he's never seen anything like it they had 10 players sit out practice Monday because of injuries he had five starters who didn't play on defense last week third down and six split and the pass is right through the hands of Terrence Cleveland well he picked up the blitz well. Jeff Francis read it beautifully. Tight end read it beautifully, and all he did was drop the football. Watch, here comes the safety. Up by number 49, There's the safety blitz. Ricardo Ingram on the blitz. Right through his hands. Eric Thomas defending for Georgia Tech, and is Bill Curry ever high on this freshman? He's another from Tennessee. Place kicker Carlos Rivez lines up. Last year kicked a 51 yarder in the final four seconds to tie the score at 6 6, and that's the way it ended between these two schools. And this is a long one. A 53 yarder. Randy Sanders holding for him. The kick is running out of gas, and it is no good. He's had a bad year. Rivez is now 3 for 9 in field goal attempts. So both teams have missed field goals. And we are scoreless to 638 remaining in the first quarter from Atlanta. Give me a light. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. A uh, pitcher of light. Bud Light. So if you want the list fill in light beer with the first name and taste. Don't just ask hey, for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring Whoa. out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. There's another kind of Ford Tempo. Specializing in sheer exuberance. Ford Tempo Sport GL. Its high output engine and road handling suspension tell you it wants to be driven. Ford Tempo Sport GL. Think of it as fun in a distinctively different form. Ford Tempo Sport GL. Have you driven a Ford lately? Georgia Tech takes over following a missed 53-yard field goal by Carlos Rivez. Rick Strong at the controls for Tech. He's completed two of three passes for 28 yards. First down at the 36. And the handoff to the up man, Malcolm King. Looks like Billy Malcolm with his face mask. Eric Thomas right there, 49. Kelly Ziegler made the tackle. Two yards, it'll be second down. Second down and eight as Malcolm King comes out. Corey Collier is in the backfield. Along with Terrence Curry, a sophomore, number 42. Option play, Strom on the pitch to Collier, trying to get outside. He's chased out at the 44-yard line by Charles Benton. Good run by Corey Collier, a senior from Columbus, Georgia. They strung the option play out pretty good. Came up short of the first down. Be short by about a yard. About a yard and a half, so it'll be third down. Big play for Georgia Tech. No score, first quarter action from Grant Field in Atlanta. And picking up the first down is Malcolm King. As he drives it to the 46-yard line of Tennessee, and again, Georgia Tech moving with ease on the ground. And where are they moving? In between, uh, right near John Davis, the big center. 6 7 3 0 4 and this guard on the left side seems to be a key. Also, Dean Weaver, the left guard, they seem to be going over the left side now. First down for Georgia Tech. Nate Kelsey, number one, is in the backfield along with Corey Collier, who was a leading rusher a year ago for Tech when he gained over 600 yards. Pearson is in motion. Play action fake by Strom over the middle, wide open. 
is Tim Mannion, the tight end, and he's got a first down at the 25-yard line. He got popped by Terry Brown and got blocked, but was he open? A little play action, and Rick Strom came right up throwing the football. Good timing on this play after the fake. What? One, two, three, sets up, and the man's open right away. He beat the linebacker, and the safety was way back there. That was Terry Brown. Another look. Watch Terry Brown here with the block. Tackles him with the block. And mark his forward progress at the 27-yard line. An 18-yard pickup. And he was over for six points, and he missed him earlier. And the pitch is to Collier with Kelsey blocking for him. Good blocking down the sidelines he goes and out of bounds. Near the 20 at the 18-yard line. I Terry McDaniel finally chased him out. Well, I love to see a play like that, Mel. I mean, that is very good offensive blocking. And it's just the way they draw it up on the board. It worked perfectly. Everybody did his job, it seems. And as you called it, very good block by Nate Kelsey, the up back. A lot of upsets today. Colorado upset Nebraska 20-10. Wow. They'll be celebrating in Boulder, Colorado tonight. And Colorado State beat Wyoming. Second down and two for Georgia Tech. Toby Pearson again in motion. Corey Collier is hit, but moves forward close to a first down. Well, oh, he really got a good, good hit. Who was it? Cedric Klein is the man who hit him. Number 30, a freshman. Cedric Klein, good hit. Gargers coming out. Jerry Mays is back in as we near the end of the first quarter. Both teams have missed field goals. Georgia Tech's David Bell missed from 19 yards. Carlos Rivez of Tennessee missed from 53 yards. Third down and one. They didn't quite get enough yardage for the first down. And guess where they're going to go? Right Quarterback there. sneak. Rick Strong trying to do it himself. Kelly Ziegler made the tackle, but he just followed his big setter, John Davis. And of course, it's it's the best call when you got short yardage because you very seldom see a short yardage quarterback sneak a home team where the referee doesn't give it to him. Well, Let's see if it is. They always get a little bit of edge on the mark at home. It's just the way it happens. That's why coaches like to call quarterback sneaks on the goal line at home. Especially, uh, Paul, they're not going to measure for it. A little short. So it's fourth down and a, and a yard, and uh, they're going to try to keep this drive alive rather than attempting to kick a field goal. They needed a long two yards on that quarterback sneak. And they, I guess Bill Curry's thinking is, I got John Davis, two quarterback sneaks. They can't stop me for that. We'll see. Another quarterback sneak, and it looks like he's got the first down. Kelly Ziegler again made the tackle. Major says, well, there's not much you can do about that. I mean, the kid fires off the football. Look at this center. He's quick. He's the first one off the football. And he weighs 304 pounds. All the scouts say he'd be a number one draft choice. They call John Davis the refrigerator mover. And there he is a couple of years ago against Clemson. William the refrigerator Perry was playing for Clemson. And uh, Davis moved him around. So they dubbed him the refrigerator mover. And Jerry Mays is cut down as he tries to run the right side. Dave Jones made a good move. He got blocked by Nate Kelsey and then spun off the block and made the tackle. Oh, Robbie Hell Scott. Robbie Scott, right. Scott's part of story. He broke his leg earlier this year, missed only three games. They also had an open date, so he missed four weeks and came back, and he's playing great, according to Johnny Majors. He's their best defensive lineman, number 65. Second down and 10. Richard Hill splits wide to the right. Strom on a rollout, looking to throw, and now he'll keep it himself. He's got running room inside the 10 and out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. Good run by Rick Strom, who has 4-6 speed in the 40. I tell you, he made a very fine move here. He needed 11 yards. He almost picks up the first down here. I think it's going to be a little bit short, depending on the mark. Here comes the rollout. Ground level shot and Rick Strom decides to run it and watch this little move right here. I think he just he hoped himself through that little hole. <laughs> he didn't think he was going to get through there, but he did. It'll be third down and one. Malcolm King is back in at fullback. Jerry Mays is the tailback for the Yellow Jackets. There's, there's not anybody head up the center. All they have to do. Is King looking through a gaping hole down near the end zone before he's driven back. But what great blocking by that offensive line. Milton Gordon made the tackle for Tennessee. 
He was top of the line of the football. There's a right guard, right tackle. Good block by Mitch Waters, the right tackle. Looking 64, he just collapses his man to the outside, and what a hole on the inside for Malcolm King. He almost gets in for six. But just over two minutes remaining in the first quarter, it is first down, goal to goal at the two-yard line for Georgia Tech. Touchdown. Into the end zone for a touchdown as the fullback Malcolm King and Georgia Tech takes the lead for King, his second touchdown of the year. Johnny Majors is pacing the sidelines, concerned at Tech's ability to move the football with ease against his Tennessee defense. And hoping his offense can do the same. That's what the game matches up. Two good moving offenses, and we've seen it here in the first quarter. Here it comes off the left side. Good standoff block by Dave Jones. He comes back on the inside. He got over. David Bell, who earlier missed a field goal, is in to try the point after with Daryl Gass, the backup quarterback, holding. And it is now 7-0 in favor of Georgia Tech with 2.02 remaining in the first quarter from Atlanta. And this is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. To reach for something bigger. a more challenging world. To feel the confidence and pride of knowing who you are, what you can do. Show the world your U.S. Navy. Live the adventure. Call 1-800-327-NAVY. Oh, those Hollywood nights. Now held over for November on Superstation WTBS. Every weeknight, check your local listing for movies like 30 Seconds Over Tokyo, the original King Kong, The Fighting Sullivan, the world premiere of the Maltese Falcon, for the first time ever in color, The Guns of Navarone, and the holiday classic Miracle on 34th Street. With Hollywood nights all November long, you just got to keep your eye on Superstation WTBS. Several substantial upsets in college football today. One in the ACC, where North Carolina State defeated Clemson 27-3. NC State goes now to 4-1 in the conference. And it was Southern Cal 10-0 over Stanford. Thank you, Bob Neal. The score, Georgia Tech leading 7-0. First quarter action from Atlanta. Well, that Bob Neal, he just does everything, doesn't he? Mr. He's, Versatility. He's back in the studio this week. Wow. He's our Brent Musburger. He just does everything. Anthony Miller awaiting the kickoff by David Bell. Miller, a junior college transfer from Pasadena City College in California, where he was also a track star. And Neil kill me when he sees you. He'll be seeing you later tonight. Don't forget, uh, this is, in essence, a home game. That's right. Miller in the end zone, and he will not run it out. So Tennessee will have the ball at the 20-yard line. Tennessee really suffering some hard times, losing two in a row. They were beaten by Army 25 to 21, losing the game in the last 35 seconds, and then were blown out by Alabama last week, 56 to 28. And they're having difficulty on defense again early tonight. Malcolm King capping a 12-play, 64-yard drive, going over from the two to give Tech the lead. Charles Wilson, Keith Davis in the backfield, along with Jeff Francis. Change the play the line. And it's Keith Davis on first down. Mark White, inside linebacker, made the stop for Georgia Tech. Davis, a sophomore from Nashville. Well, they got a lot of young people in that defense. Take a look at Johnny Majors. He's got the sport coat off now. He's got the rain jacket on. Change his luck a little. I think they aren't superstitious, they're crazy. I mean, I mean, the athletes are very, very superstitious. On second down and nine, Francis on a rollout looking to throw, but can't find anyone open, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 24 by Kyle Ambrose. Bill Curry said even though Tennessee is struggling, he's worried about the volunteers because Johnny Majors is still the head coach and because Jeff Francis has completed nearly 68% of his passes, so he said, they're just waiting to break loose, and he hopes that it doesn't happen tonight. And the guy who may break it loose for him is Anthony Miller. He hasn't had his hands on the football yet. Six foot tall, 180 pounds, a junior college transfer, and he could fly. Number seven, 
top of your screen. On third down, Francis with time. Great protection. Pass is complete to Joey Kinkscales, the second leading receiver. He had 20 receptions coming into the game, trailing only Anthony Miller. A little zip on that one, a little hook pattern, and he popped it right in there. First and down. Anthony Miller, there's a good look at him. He's being uh, double covered, so to speak, folks. There's a couple flat jerseys watching him wherever he lines up, especially on passing situation. First down at the 32-yard line, Georgia Tech leading 7-0. Klingscales with two receptions for 20 yards so far. Francis stepping up and unloading long. Pass is underthrown. Could have been picked off, but Reggie Rutland couldn't hold it. It could have been offensive interference there, too. Anthony Miller was the intended receiver, but that pass was running out of steam. And Francis just couldn't get it there. They had him double covered. I was talking. Well, look at the two guys at the 38. Now watch. There's the short and long on him. Then they got a safety man over here. So he's being watched by three people over here. Number 16 should have had the interception. That's Reginald Rutland. But I think Anthony Miller had more to say about it than anybody. A little interference. Sideway Woods. It. Number five is now in at wide receiver for Tennessee. Second down and 10. Like Francis may be changing the play. Exactly. Blitz. And the handoff is to Vando Davis, his first carry of the game. Stopped at the 35-yard line by Eric Thomas. Vando Davis, a freshman from Wilmington, Delaware, another sprinter with 4.4 speed in the 40s, a member of the track team at Tennessee. Keith Davis is back in at tailback. They're down and eight. Passing situation for Jeff Francis. Link scales is wide to the right. Woods split to the left along with Terrence Cleveland. Safety blitz. Here they come. Francis scrambling for it. He's stopped short of the first down by Steve Mullen, number 84, a freshman defensive tackle. And forward progress got up to about the 43 and a half yard line, but his knee hit back between the 41 and the 42. So it's going to be short, about a yard. They're going to have to punt. The kicking game has been a problem for Tennessee. Not only is Carlos Rivera's having a bad year and he's missed a field goal tonight, but their regular putter, Bob Garman, has a pulled hamstring and is not playing tonight. Jim Asman will do the punting, but we'll have to wait for his punt because the first quarter has come to an end. That's the end of the first period from Atlanta with a score. Georgia Tech 7, Tennessee nothing. And this is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. Walter, but I know you still got something left. Yeah, you've got energy from 100% whole wheat. Wheaties energy. Hey there, Walter, turn it on. Wheaties keep you keep it on. Oh, it's all out good whole wheat. Now go tell your mama what the big boys eat. Minolta Freedom 3. Freedom. New and worry free. Freedom. Auto focusing. Freedom. Auto everything. Freedom. Lick is all you do. Freedom. Freedom 3 comes through. Freedom. Freedom. What you got? Freedom. To take your fair shot. The Minolta Freedom line of 35 millimeter cameras. Only from the mind of Minolta. Portions of tonight's game are being brought to you by Bud Light, the light beer with the first name and taste. Everything else is just a light. Mel Proctor with Paul Horning back in Atlanta. And Ricardo Ingram is back deep for Georgia Tech, awaiting the punt by Jim Asman, who's punted only three times this year. He's averaging 40.7 yards per kick. Georgia Tech leading 7 to nothing. Well, the kicking game last week was terrible. It's a lot better here. He gets a pretty good punt. Ingram looking for blocking, and he's bought down at the 22-yard line. Flag down. Milton Gordon, number 52, made the tackle. A 46-yard punt and a nine-yard return by Ingram. Got a flag. Haven't had many penalties so far. Yes, sir. Different moving first half. Both teams proving they can move the football. Clipping. And that's going to put Georgia Tech at a disadvantage, not the best of field position. Well, in games televised by the Superstation that Georgia Tech has played in, the Yellow Jackets have gone 4-0, so apparently we bring them good luck. 
All-American Bowl last year, if you remember. Michigan State, Georgia Tech, lost its quarterback. I saw John Newberry downstairs, who does a little radio. Georgia Tech Network. Bill Curry suspended him. Terrence Curry in the backfield, along with number 20, Jerry Mays. Movement on the right side. Tim Mannion was offside. What happened in that All-American Bowl, Mel? A couple of guys missed curfew. They were suspended, and they kicked three or four kids off the football team. And, well, I tell you, that defense gutted it up, and they pulled out a big upset over Michigan State. Illegal procedure against Georgia Tech. You mentioned John Dewberry. Uh, Bill Curry told us an interesting story about him. You know, the players at Georgia Tech select their own positions. When they come into the program, the player will say, look, I think I'm a wide receiver. That's what I'd like to play. And the coaches say, all right, you can do it. And the coaches don't change their positions. The players, if they decide they're not cut out to play a certain position, will come to the coaching staff and say, look, I think I'm better suited to play safety. Mm -hmm. And he said John Dewberry slammed his fist on the desk and said, look, I'm the best quarterback you've got. Leave me at quarterback because Bill Curry wanted to switch him to the secondary. And he stuck with him, and he was an outstanding quarterback for the Yellow Jackets. Sure was. Terrence Curry gets the call out to about the 12-yard line. That's kind of interesting, though, allowing the players to choose their own positions. And really, the, the big difference there is a lot of your running backs, your smaller running backs, when they come to the collegiate ranks, they still want to be running backs, but they end up as wide receivers and defensive backs. That's where the big switch comes. Yellow Jackets go with two tight ends, Tim Mannion and Chris Cottle, number 92, a redshirt freshman who should see a lot of action tonight. Bill Curry really likes him. He's a 242-pounder. They run the option. And the pitch is to Jerry Mays. Oh, I want to tell you what a great pitch Rick Strom made. He made a great pitch to the running back that time. That ball could have been fumbled. All right, Paul, let's go to Bob Neal for an update. Flag down. We've been talking about upsets today. I have a couple more to tell you about. Penn State, sixth ranked, upset number two, Alabama, 23 to three earlier today. Alabama with only 44 yards rushing and Texas upset SMU 27-24 for Texas' first home win of the year. Now back to Grand Field. All right, thank you, Bob. It'll be third down and one for Georgia Tech. Malcolm King is back in at fullback. The handoff is to King, needing only a yard for a first down. He's got it, dragging tacklers for a couple of additional yards. Terry McDaniel was the first man to hit him, the left cornerback. See what they do with these tight ends today in college and pro football. And this started about eight or nine years ago. You see these big tight ends, they go in motion and they they're just an extra blocker at the point of attack. This is just good hard running by Malcolm King. There was a big hole right at the line of scrimmage, and then he just fought his way for an extra five. Smokey, the blue tick hound. Okay. One of Paul's favorites. Yeah, I didn't know that. He was asking about you before the game. <laughs> Said, have you seen Paul? He promised me a treat. There you go. Georgia Tech has taken a timeout, so with 13 minutes remaining in the second quarter, the Yellow Jackets will talk things over, leading 7-0. clean, crisp taste hey, sis. that says Budweiser. This bud for you. I'm the first to leave my bed. Gotta get them dressed and fed. Give them all a little pet and some citrus he'll select. And their day gets going and their juices get flowing with the taste of fire vitamin C. When the juice is from the heart, it's the healthy way to start. Citrus will select. Members of the Tennessee band wearing their rain jackets on a rainy night in Georgia. Georgia Tech with a football leading 7 to nothing. First down at the 29-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. It's not raining. It was. It rained all day. Stopped just before game time. Rick Strom with a play-action fake with time. 
And the pass looked like it might have been deflected. Either that or slipped out of the side of his hand, but it was really fluttering and fell well short of the intended receiver, Toby Pearson, who was open on a little square out pattern. Rick Strom, who redshirted a year ago, he's completed 63 of 122 passes coming into the game, and he's three for five tonight for 46 yards. Florida State leading Louisville 27 to 10 in the second quarter. On you, Cardinals. Second down. Gary Lee splits wide to the right. Tight end Cottle moves to the left side. The pitch is to Corey Collier. Gets a good block from Malcolm King. Victor Cupper's little safety man came up to make the stop. Five, eight, 155 pounder. He stuck his nose in there and made the tackle as we look at Bill Curry, you played with yes, him at sir. Green Bay. Always he was an outstanding center, wasn't he? Was an All-American center right here at Georgia Tech. Came up to Green Bay and played a long, long time. He wasn't that big. In fact, he's uh, way down from what he was. He was about 235 pounds then, of course, in the weight program. And a very quick and agile all-pro center. Played, of course, under Lombardi at Green Bay. And then went to Don Shula with the Colts. The option play, the pitch is to Collier. And he's in trouble, and he's dragged down to a loss. Charles Kimball got a piece of his jersey and pulled him down. Boy. Bring up a punting situation. They played the option well. Charles Kimball makes an outstanding tackle here. Stop the first down try. Here comes the counter option. It pitches good, but what, look at this defensive play by Charles Kimball, a sophomore. will punt. Thomas Woods has it at the 31-yard line. He's got some room. There he goes. The punter, McDevitt, trying to stop him. And they finally bring him down at the 23-yard line. A great run by Woods, who broke a 60-yarder earlier this year against Auburn. You know, Alonzo Watson finally made the tackle. You know, how many times have we seen punt returns? The best punt returns are usually the guy, when he catches the football, he breaks straight up the field. Whenever you see that return go on, he runs laterally around the field that never, it very seldom breaks one. This is the way you break a punt return, folks. 48-yard return, boy, a beautiful punt return. And he almost gets down here, although it's pretty good pursuit by that punt team to stop six points. First down for Tennessee at the 23-yard line. The pitch is to Keith Davis. Nothing doing. Georgia Tech defense really fired up now. Sean Smith made the tackle. A couple of members of that defense, Kyle Ambrose and Ricardo Ingram, are members of what is known as the Black Watch, a select group of defensive players that was started last year by Georgia Tech. Bill Curry and one of his assistants came up with the idea based on the uh, spit and polish mm -hmm. police yep. who guard yep. Edinburgh Co the Castle in Scotland. Bill Curry had just returned from a trip to Scotland and was impressed by uh, the guards, and so they dubbed the members of the defense the Black Watch. Here comes a blitz, and Francis is I down for a big loss as Mike Rosamilia made the tackle. Lost seven yards. <laughs> Here he comes out of the left corner of your screen, and Francis never saw him. Not at all. Mike Rosamilia, Titusville, Florida, senior, never had a shot. So the loss back to the 29 will be third down and 16. Georgia Tech expecting a pass. Francis throws, and a great catch at the five-yard line by Joey Klinkscales. And now they say he was unable to hold on. It's incomplete. Apparently lost it as he hit the turf. Great try for it. He had it for a moment right off his fingertip. Klinkscales. Good pass protection this time. Had his man beaten right there. Just a little pass was just a little... Too far wide, incomplete. He lost control of it. So Carlos Rivez will try another field goal. This will be a 46-yarder. He missed a 53-yarder earlier in the game. Last year, he kicked two against Tech. A 51-yarder and a 55-yarder. A high snap. And Randy Sanders is buried by Gerald Chamberlain. And they waste that beautiful punt return, Mel. And 
and they miss a chance for three points. I'll tell you, what a turnaround. Big play by the cornerback, freshman Gerald Chamblin, making his first start tonight. And Tennessee is still struggling. Georgia Tech leading 7-0, and this is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. Pure, natural glass protects the taste of the drinks inside. Choose just the right size. In single-service containers, or big reusable bottles, knowing that the good things that come in recyclable glass come just as their maker intended. Brought to you by the people who make glass containers naturally. Green Bay, Wisconsin, 20 below. The last place you'd want to be with the cold, unless you're the Green Bay Packer backers. So we asked them to try Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. That stuff just clipped out my head. Should have found it a long time ago. Got rid of my aches and pains. Guy up my ernie nose. And Alka-Seltzer Plus, that's all I ever needed. Eight of every ten packer backers who tried it switched to Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. Fast, effective relief for tough winter colds. Super Football Saturday Night is brought to you locally by the people who make glass containers naturally. Tennessee got a bad snap from Nick Zacchino, who centers the long snaps, and Randy Sanders had to eat the football as Chamblin buried him, and he's in trouble. Georgia Tech takes over at the Yellow Jacket 43, first down. Great field position started off. Tech with 106 yards rushing so far, and they stay on the ground as the handoff goes to Malcolm King, brought down by Milton Gordon, number 52. And why not, Mel? They've already got over 100 yards rushing. Georgia Tech, so that offensive line doing a fine job tonight. Gary Lee is back in at wide receiver. King comes up. Terrence Curry, number 42, replaces King. And the rushing yards updated, 111 yards for Tech, only 25 for Tennessee. Second down and four. Curry and Jerry Mays are the running backs. Terrence Curry, the big fullback, ripping for another first down. Goff Moore from Alabama. Doesn't seem to make too much difference who's carrying the football. They've all been effective tonight for Tech. Look at that offense. There's your big center. Ron Davis looking for the second right hand. He's holding. Got a hold of that jersey, but he got away with it. Sometimes they do miss. There's a good shot of him. Is he, is he huge or not? Named the first team All-American last year by the Sporting News. Preseason All-American pick again this year. Toby Pearson is in motion. Strong with play action. Here comes the blitz, and he throws it away. Dale Jones was all over him. The All-Southeastern Conference linebacker. Now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. You're watching WTBS Atlanta. Mel Proctor with Paul Horning back at Grant Field in Atlanta. Georgia Tech leading Tennessee 7-0. Bill Curry, an interesting man while he was playing professional football. He tried a number of different off-season occupations. He attended theology school for a year, worked in a bank, sold real estate, even served as a sportscaster. But he said all along he knew that he was meant to work with youngsters into some sort of capacity and eventually wound up in coaching. The pitch is to Terrence Curry trying to turn the corner. Okay, he's ridden out of bounds by Tyrone Robinson, number 96. Good defense by Tennessee. No game, so it'll be third down and ten. Johnny Majors, who played at Tennessee, along with two brothers, Billy and Bobby. Mm -hmm. All great football players. Third down, ten. Gary Lee splits out wide to the right. Georgia Tech has converted three of six third down situations. Very good percentage, 50%. Strong with a deep drop, again with time. And it's batted into the air, and it's incomplete, but a penalty marker is down. Charles Davis may be guilty of interference. He got it right on the money. He collided with Toby Pearson. He hit him before the ball arrived. And back in Knoxville, a sigh of relief. Oh, oh, he 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 who bleeds orange? 
I just want to put a plug. We're going to have a little retirement dinner for Lindsay down in Knoxville as we take another look at this. This is interference. Look at there. There's the contact way before the ball got there. A little retirement dinner for Lindsay down in Knoxville, November 6th. So if you haven't got your ticket, if you're in Knoxville, don't miss it. A lot of people are going to come in. going to have a good night. Georgia Tech with 10 first downs on the move again, thanks to a pass interference penalty against Tennessee. Tech leading 7 0. Malcolm King and Corey Pauly are the running backs. The handoff to King, and he's hit, but tries to struggle out of his tackle. Milton Gordon made the tackle down around the ankles, and then Dale Jones finished him off. He was knocked by number 52, Milton Gordon. And number 54, like Dale Jones. Mr. Major is not too happy. Is yeah, he? he didn't like what's going on right now. Loss of the yard will be second down the 11. Malcolm King has carried 10 times for 54 yards for the Yellow Jackets. They go from the I formation. Collier the deep back. Tim Mannion is in motion. The option. Strom on the keeper. And he's to the 30 where Tyrone Robinson makes the tackle. Passing down coming up. Rich Strom, a junior from Pittsburgh. He's playing with a bad ankle. He hurt his ankle against North Carolina. And last week, he re-injured the ankle, and Bill Curry used both his quarterbacks, Rick Strom and Darrell Gast, almost equally. Let's see what they do with Gary Lee. This is his kind of down. Pearson goes wide to the left. Lee splits to the right. Third down and six. Strom steps up under pressure, and it's incomplete. Looked like we might have had some early contact right. that time as Toby Pearson got hit by Terry Brown, number 14. And I'll tell you one thing, if he'd pulled it down and ran with that football, he would have had the first down easily. There wasn't anybody in front of him. Threw the ball behind his receiver. Now David Bell comes in to try a field goal. This attempt will be from the 37, so it's a 47-yarder. Kid was kicking him easily. Warm up, 52, 53 yards. He missed a 19-yarder earlier tonight. His career field goal percentage is 74 percent, and it's hooking to the left. Short and two. doesn't make it. He misses another one. This one from 47 yards out. And he got under it too, uh, Mel. He didn't get his foot at the right particular spot on that football. He got under it. So Bell has missed his second field goal of the game. It's still 7-0 in favor of Georgia Tech. Charlie, give me a light. Oh, Charlie, a Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Uh, Bud Light. Hey, thanks. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. I can have a light. Mm. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. When all the dust has settled, the testing's completed, the review's written. The only real competition for this BMW these BMWs. The Atlantic Coast Conference is proud of the fact that its student athletes continue to distinguish themselves in the classroom as well as on the playing field. During the 1985-86 school year, a total of 533 athletes were named to the ACC honor roll for posting a grade point average of 3.0 or better. First down, Jeff Francis back to throw with lots of time, and he guns it complete to Joey Klinkscales at midfield. He's got a first down. And 20 quick yards. They've got to start throwing the football a little bit. Georgia Tech very soft in the secondary. Very loose back there in that zone. He picked up 21 yards, and you saw the big hole there. There wasn't anybody around him uh, when he caught the football. I don't believe Anthony Miller has yeah. caught a pass, but Clay Scales has been very busy. Absolutely, and I tell you, they're just double covering wherever Anthony Miller goes. 
Uh, Duke, he was going to catch one coming across that middle. The handoff is to the fullback, Charles Wilson, ripping for about eight yards on first down. Paul Jurgensen, the left tackle, made the stop. Last year, these teams battled a six-all tie in Knoxville. Carlos Rivez field goal with four seconds left tied it. Two years ago, Quad Rivez, Carlos' older brother, kicked a field goal in the last 35 seconds to win it for Tennessee, 24-21. Tonight, Georgia Tech leads 7-0. Wilson again. And we start down the quarter. The middle linebacker made the tackle. Porter, another fine freshman from Valdosta, Georgia, the top linebacker in the state his senior year in high school. Valdosta is always in the top, it seems, top ten of the country. And normally, in the last four or five years, they've been number one most of the time. Great Rod's program, don't they, in high school? Sure Valdosta. do. There's Rod Stevens, who has been injured, returning to action tonight. And Yellow Jackets are glad to have him back. He's an outstanding player. Third down and one. Wilson over the top. He's got the first down and nearly broke that for a touchdown. Well, that happens a lot of times when you, you beat that first wave. Everybody's stacked up inside. They're all on third and short. And, boy, if you can get through there clean, you only have one man to beat. Now, watch. Touchdown saving tackle. And look at this hole. He didn't have to jump there, did he? There he is. If he would have beaten the one remaining man, that was Anthony Harrison back there on the tackle. First down to the 31-yard line. Off this time goes to Pete Panuska, his first carry of the game, and he's inside the 20. He's been bothered by a bad hip. The Tennessee running backs have really been banged up at one time or another. Four different running backs have been hurt. He was stopped by number 45, John Porter, and number 47, Rick Panuska, a senior from Brick, New Jersey. Another Tennessee first down. The ball's finally getting untracked offensively in the second quarter and beginning to move. This time it's Wilson. Brought down by Paul Jurgensen, number 86, and Kyle Ambrose, number 90. Four minutes remaining in the second quarter. Georgia Tech on top, 7-0. Mark White, number 35, is back in at linebacker for Tech. Second down, and six yards to go. Miller splits out wide to the right along with Terrence Cleveland. Spring scale splits to the left. The pitch is to Panuska on the cutback down of the 10-yard line. Number 26. Johnny Majors has used a lot of different running backs. Keith and Vando Davis, Panuska, Charles Wilson have all played in this first half. Their leading rusher, William Howard, did not make the trip to Atlanta. He's sidelined with a knee injury, and he's rushed for almost 500 yards and 10 touchdowns this year. So they're without him. Third down one, just outside the 10. Three minutes left in the half. Jim Miller, number 25, is in the backfield now, along with Keith Davis. They go from a power eye. And it's Wilson over the top. Easy. He's got the first down. Rod Stevens makes the tackle. I tell you, I think the defense for Georgia Tech is just what they used to call the old submarine deal, or the defensive linemen, they just stick their heads and they're going down because all the Tennessee backs have to do is just high step it. Nobody seems to be trying to make a tackle at all. They just seem to be submarining in that defensive line in there, and they're not looking to make the tackle. First and goal to go at the six-yard line. Wilson has carried nine times for 39 yards. Again, the power eye, and again, it's Wilson. Hit at the line of scrimmage by Travis Moody, number 75. At halftime, we'll go down the street to Bob Neal in our studios. He'll have scores and highlights from other games around the country. And there were a lot of upsets today, plus this week's greatest game, the Georgia-Florida battle from 1980. And we'll also take a closer look at the campuses of Tennessee and Georgia Tech. That's all coming up at halftime with Mr. Versatility, Bob Neal. Mr. Neal. Second down, goal to go at the five. Wilson, the deep back in the eye, along with Panuska. Hand off Wilson, a little stutter step move, breaks a tackle, and then it's buried. Didn't have much.
much blocking and tried to do it by himself, and Mark White finally put him down. And I tell you, that play like that pumps up that defense. You see him starting to jump around a little bit. Take another shot low. The low angle shot. There's a good block on the linebacker, but he gets back up to get in on the tackle. That's Reginald Rutland, number 16, making a play. So it'll be third down, goal to go from the five-yard line. Anthony Miller is wide to the right. Joey Clinchscale splits to the left. Keith Davis, now the deep back in the eye. They're going to take time out. Sure, they were mixed up. So Jeff Francis calls a timeout. And a very smart call, timeout, too. They need this third down play. It's seven to nothing in favor of Georgia Tech as the Vols talk things over. This is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. You know I should be mature, Bobby. I mean, we just got engaged. But we're just stationed overseas. It's only 18 months. Well, it's gonna be the longest year and a half of my life. Saying goodbye is never easy, but with AT&T International Long Distance, it's Retro. easy to say hello. A 10-minute call to Japan can average just 95 cents a minute. Right. Only AT&T can keep you this close anywhere in the world. The superstation is the way to see the NBA. Monday, it's the return of America's game, the NBA. World champion Boston, led by league MVP Larry Bird, clash with Dallas. Live at 7.35 p.m. Eastern on the Superstation. Monday. When you want to see the best, it's WTBS at the Hoop. Election Watch 86 on CNN. See the most extensive network election coverage beginning Tuesday, November 4th, live on CNN. Well, Proctor with Paul Hornig back at Grant Field in Atlanta, Tennessee, threatening to score a third and goal situation for the Volunteers at the five-yard line. Miller splits wide to the right. Link scales is split left. The long running back is Wilson. France is rolling out in trouble and throws into the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. Joey Quick Scales. Great catch in the end zone. And Francis did a good job of getting rid of that ball under a lot of pressure. I tell you, that was a great delivery of a pass under pressure, as you said, Mel. He was he was on his way down and almost almost in the grass. And Quick uh, Scales came back to the football. He came back to it and made a nice catch here. You see it. Here we go. Roll out right. Now he's almost looking at Quick Scales right there. His body. Protected the football with his body, came back, he was in the end zone when he made the catch. But what this is all about, we've got a penalty. An eligible man downfield. Oh, what a terrible penalty for Tennessee. He's going to erase that touchdown, folks. Oh, oh, oh. There was a late flag on the play, an eligible man down. The down remains the same. The touchdown does not count. And now Georgia Tech will take a timeout. So we'll return to Grant Field with the score still. Georgia Tech 7 and Tennessee nothing. Announcing the Valvoline Four Guard I Love a Parade Sweepstakes. Win a trip for four to four of America's greatest parades. To enter, watch the next commercial and remember what the driver of the smoking car says. Then go to a participating store for details. Big parade this year. It's the economy. Oh, Russell. Russell, what kind of motor oil are you using? Motor oil is motor oil. Motor oil definitely is not motor oil. A four-cylinder engine works harder and needs the extra protection of specially formulated Valvoline Foreguard. Not much of a break this year. That's the economy. Oh, Russell! Good health at birth. To be wished for. To be worked for. Together. Johnny Majors is really upset. An ineligible man downfield penalty called against the Volunteers. They had a third and goal situation at the five, and now it's back to the ten. 
A third and goal to go from the 10-yard line. Georgia Tech leading 7-0, and now would appear Francis will have to throw again. What appeared to be a touchdown pass to Klingscales was negated by the penalty. Anthony Miller. Oh, was he hit. Stopped short by Georgia Tech. Charles Wilson somehow holding on despite a vicious hit by Reggie Rutland. He saved six points right here. Miller was open on the left side. Now, Anthony Miller's on the outside. There he is at the bottom of your screen. He was open for a minute. Jeff Francis goes to the up man. He's wide open. Now, he really just takes a hit here. That's Charles Wilson. And Reginald Rutland saves six points. And the ball rests just inside the two. And then we're going to take another timeout. It'll be fourth down and goal to go. We'll take a timeout here. A little disorganized. Looks like they're going to go for the touchdown rather than a field goal. I'll tell you. With 24 seconds left in the half. They need two. We take a look over on this sideline. Majors wants to be sure that everybody knows what's happening here. Francis, you see, they're talking to the offensive coordinator up here in the booth with us. We saw them go to that power eye formation earlier when they were down inside the five, and it looks like they'll go to that again with Keith Davis, Charles Wilson, and Jim Miller, three running backs in there. Seven nothing, Georgia Tech leading. And a two-yard run by Malcolm King. What in effect they're going to face here is 11-man line because with the ball sitting inside the two-yard line, if they do run it, you're going to have 11 men go after that football. Tennessee also puts a tackle, Kevin Simons, a 285-pounder at tight end to provide some extra blocking. So it'll be fourth down and goal to go just inside the two. The Volunteers have missed two field goals in this first half. Now the Georgia Tech defense is trying to get their fans to holler, but right down behind them are Tennessee fans in orange. So Pete Panuska is now checked into the backfield. They go from the power eye. He's changing the play, maybe, huh? Turn around. The handoff to Wilson over the top for a touchdown. Oh, he wanted it. Just straight, hard-nosed football, boy. Major said we're going to jam it in there. We're not going to get any points. Here first touchdown first. of the year for Charles Wilson. Right off the right side. And good shot here. Look at Mr. Wilson, boy. He's up in the air about four and a half yards, five yards. It's another look. Here he goes. He got in easily. Carlos Ravez has missed a couple of conversion kicks this year. He was 11 for 13 coming into the game. Last year, he made all 30 that he attempted, but he's had a tough year. Not a good snap, a late placement, but he gets the kick up and good. Good hold. Good hold by Randy Sanders. Did a good job. Well, the Volunteers have tied it up with 21 seconds left in the first half. I tell you, that's a, that's a point that sometimes uh, is, is wasted. Mel, you know, that holder is so important. Not only in getting some bad snaps and picking them off the ground sometimes, but the where he places the laces. I kicked a long time and had one of the great holders I saw in professional football in Bart Starr. He would always move this that lace on that football around so I wouldn't have to kick into it. It's the worst psychological thing in the world for a kicker to have a 40-yard field goal and all of a sudden to look up and those laces be facing you right in your face. You just know you're going to blow it. A reminder at halftime, we'll go down the street to Bob Neal in our studios. He'll have scores and highlights from other games today, plus this week's greatest game, the Georgia-Florida battle from 1980. And we'll also take a look at the campuses of Tennessee and Georgia Tech. Gary Lee will drop back along with Corey Collier for Georgia Tech. We're tied 7-7 in what was expected to be a high-scoring offensive battle. Revez to kick off. Kicking off for Tennessee. 21 seconds left in the half. Line drive kick. Feel it. Nope. Right through the legs of Corey Collier into the end zone. Or it's down by Gary Lee. So it's a touchback, and Georgia Tech will have the ball with 17 seconds left. Try to keep the ball away from Gary Lee, who is capable of breaking the long one, and Johnny Majors doesn't want a big play with just seconds left in this half. Bill Curry, who played on four NFL championship teams, two of the Packers and two of the Baltimore Colts. That is impressive. He's got a few rings, doesn't he? Played under some great coaches, Don Shula in Baltimore, Vince Lombardi, of course, 
and he, Bay, Bobby Dodd here at Tennessee, and he's a well-respected coach in his own right. The players just respect. Bill. He's done a wonderful job here. Rick Strom content to just run out the clock. So that will be the final play of the first half. A lot of movement up and down the field by both teams with very little scoring. And the score at halftime is Georgia Tech 7, Tennessee 7. We'll be right back. Field in Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia Tech and Tennessee tied.